I'm pretty sure I do not need to explain the importance of quality audio in your videos. It's crucial, you know that, and when you're working and recording with a point and shoot camera, the audio can just turn out tinny and super gross. But I learned a trick that can solve all of it. Let's head back to the studio and jump into the tutorial. This little camera, I love it and I hate it. It is such a cool little pocket sized camera, but the audio is terrible. You know, on most of these little point and shoots, it's pretty terrible. But with this trick I learned, I'm about to teach you, I've actually gotten the audio on this guy to sound a lot better. Let's jump into Premiere and I'll show you the few effects, audio effects that you can add to any audio clip that sounds tinny and like it lacks bass and that like, that just like real nice tone, what you can do to get a lot closer to that. So I'm here in uh, my Premiere file. I already dragged the two audio clips that I recorded earlier here in my studio into my timeline to speed this up. The first clip I have here is, this is how the audio sounds without this tactic. The best I can do here with this tutorial is just play this out loud on my speakers here in the studio. It's not perfect, but it'll work, it'll suffice. Let's keep rolling with it. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our effects control right here, and we're going to search for parametric equalizer. And we're gonna drop that puppy onto our clip. This is the secret sauce. I didn't know what this, this little effect did, but it is magic. I love it and I'm so excited to show this to you. Click on the sound of our clip and then scroll down here under our effects controls and hit edit. Now that we have this up, the one thing that we're gonna do is over here on the low end, the 40 Hertz, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this which is this little keyframe right here. And we're gonna pull this up to about uh, 120, 130 is usually where I like it. And I'm gonna show you what that does. So if I just put this bad boy right back down and I click play. This is how the audio sounds with this tactic. And I'll bring my playhead back. Actually, before I go any further, let me show you one more quick trick so you can loop the audio whenever you're working to master it. All you have to do is go to your timeline and go to the very beginning of the clip and click I to set an in point and then click O to set an out point. And then what you can do with this little loop icon is make sure that's toggled on. If you don't see that, just go ahead and click this little plus It'll bring up the button editor and you can drag that loop icon right into the bar here. So what that'll do is that'll just tactic. This is how the audio sounds with this tactic. This is how the audio sounds. It'll just create a loop. And frankly, it's gonna get super annoying um, hearing that over and over and over and over again, especially if it's a short clip, but it is way less annoying than Editing and then having to click back, go to the beginning of the playhead, click back, go to the beginning of the playhead. That sucks way more. All right, back to the effects. So now that we have our loop, I'm gonna show you what it's gonna do once we adjust this parametric, parametric equalizer. This is how the audio sounds with this tactic. This is how the audio sounds with this tactic. This is how the audio sounds with this tactic. This is how the audio sounds with... You can start to tell and you can start to hear that it's getting a little bit more of that low end. Where I end up actually liking it, and you can kind of use this as your baseline, is around 130 hertz. And then I usually put the decibels up to 20. And then what I do is I go ahead and enable the shelf so it's on its steepest incline, I guess you could say. We have three more effects to add. That's two more. We have three more effects to add. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this guy. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down here and add mastering. We'll drag mastering over to our clip. Slide down here, click edit. 
Perfect. Now we got our mastering. What I like to do on mastering, it's super simple. I'm gonna go ahead and enable low shelf. High shelf is already enabled. I'm going to, usually our reverb is around 20. Bring your reverb all the way down. So here's how we sound now. This is how the audio sounds with this tactic. Not too bad. Okay, you can't tell a huge difference, especially probably through the speaker, but now I'm gonna adjust the playhead and show you the original clip and how much difference we've already made. So here is without. This is how the audio sounds without this tactic. And? This is how the audio sounds with this tactic. It's starting to get better, but we have two more effects to add. Next, we're gonna go over here and we're going to add the multi-band compressor. So I'm gonna drag this onto the clip. We'll go ahead and close this guy. Click on there. And then let's edit our multi-band compressor. So here, before I play the clip, we're basically gonna adjust the low end frequencies of the clip. Again, our audio is really tinny because of this microphone, so mostly what we're gonna be adjusting is the low end and mid end um, audio ranges. Audio ranges? Sure, I'm gonna go with audio ranges. So let's play the clip back really quick just so we can see how our frequency lines up. And I'm just gonna like go ahead and mute my speakers. We don't need to listen to this once again yet. I'm just gonna show you what the frequency looks like here in our multi-band compressor. So as you can see here, we're still lacking a little bit of low end. You can also tell by our equalizer right here. So one thing that I like to do is I like to bring down this threshold to right about where the yellow is hitting. So on, on this low end, it's right around 36. And then what I like to do is bring up the gain to accommodate for it. And usually I'll bring up my gain about 10 decibels. So let me just go ahead and pause this, restart it, and I'm gonna show you what this sounds like. Turn the speakers back on. This is how the audio sounds with this tack. Let's keep rolling. So close this guy, and the last thing that we wanna add is a hard limiter. Drag this puppy right on there, click edit. Now, we got our, our hard limiter. What I like to do is always limit to negative three decibels. This is going to make sure that our audio file or our audio doesn't clip and get too crazy loud. So we'll set that to a limit of three dB. So if we go back to our playhead. This is how the audio sounds with this tactic. Oh, it's starting to sound so good. Now, just really quickly, I wanna go back. I wanna show you our original clip and how our sound has changed by adding those four effects. This is how the audio sounds without oh. this tactic. And? This is how the audio sounds with this tactic. Oh, it's sounding so much better. So those are the four effects that you are gonna want to play with. The parametric equalizer, mastering, the multiband compressor, and the hard limiter. I highly suggest you start playing with a few of those different levers with, within each of those tools. But between those four effects, it is going to drastically help you cr create, produce, in post, awesome audio. That is the tutorial for the day. If you like this tutorial and you want more like it, let me know in the comments below. What are you struggling with in Adobe Premiere that I can go out and research, learn some stuff, and report back to you after I've had a chance to experiment and play with it? Yeah, let me know. Other than that, have an awesome day. If it tickles your fancy, you know, just go ahead and smash, crush, touch, click, whatever, the like button, the bell, subscribe. You know what to do, you guys. I'm out, later. First, let's get the studio set up.
I'm kidding. It's gonna take way too long to put in the video. All right, let's just pause here.